Hi, I'm Joe Yu and uh, welcome to the meeting of the International Woodcarvers Association. I'm a CCA member since about 1999. All right, guys, good afternoon. Welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers where woodcarvers are helping woodcarvers. Uh, today is April the 9th, 2022, uh, a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I wanna thank you for coming in on Saturday afternoon to join us uh, with the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, today on our meeting, we have a uh, guest with us coming to us from Sacramento, California. Uh, CCA member uh, Joe Yu is going to be joining us in just a few minutes. Uh, he's going to be talking about being creative uh, and designing a carving, and he's going to talk about wire armature. So uh, we look forward to uh, hearing what Joe has to say. Uh, before we get started, I uh, want to let everybody know we're going to be doing a healthy knife auction during this meeting. Uh, it's similar to what we've done in the past. Uh, anybody who wants to bid on the knife, uh, put that bid down in the chat. Uh, this knife is a Joe Yu handle. Um, it's a one and three quarter inch blade, uh, three and a half inch handle. And uh, it also comes with a sheath uh, provided to us by Helvi. Uh, Helvi helps sponsor us and uh, the proceeds go to help us continue these meetings uh, and pay for the Zoom subscription. So if you're interested in, uh, in bidding on that knife, we'll put that uh, over in the chat. Uh, the high bid will win. So we'll continue this auction throughout the meeting. And at the end, we'll call it uh, the winning bidder. bidder uh, we collect money through uh, PayPal. Uh, so just be prepared to stay on the meeting at the end and we'll get all of your information uh, at the end of the meeting. Again, I wanna say thank you all for coming on today. I wanna let you know that uh, next week, uh, is our two-year anniversary of the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, we started these meetings back in uh, 2020 at the beginning of COVID uh, when everything started shutting down and uh, we started having issues as far as being able to get together with meetings and shows and classes and clubs. Uh, next weekend, we're going to do a uh, big celebration with some giveaways. I think we've got um, a, cert a certificate to Woodcarving Academy we're going to be giving away. We're going to give away a hat and a T-shirt. Uh, so make sure you join us next week. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the lineup later on in the meeting, but next week we're going to have Chris Hammock that's going to be coming on. Uh, we'll do a uh, video of his. It's a sharpening video at the beginning of the meeting. And then he's going to come in and talk about the Carving the Rockies meeting uh, that's coming up in September that the CCA is doing. So look forward to all of that stuff. Again, I'll be talking more about that at the end of the meeting. Uh, again, today we have Joe Yu on. Joe is the vice president of the CCA, the Caricature Carvers of America. Uh, he's coming to us from Sacramento, California, and he's going to be talking to us about wire armatures and being creative in your carving. Uh, Joe, I want to thank you for coming on with us today, and I'll go ahead and turn this meeting over to you at this time. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's uh, kind of it's kind of strange to talk to everybody, although I'm just talking to a screen, but I just want to welcome you to Sacramento. Um, I know Sacramento puts me way far away from most of you guys, but if you're ever in Sacramento, you're invited to come and, and see my little workshop. Um, one of the things, this is what I'd like to do today. I wanna go ahead and show you my little studio. I'll give you a quick tour of it. And then I'm gonna talk about wire armatures and designing your own piece. This is something that's really close to, to my heart. Um, because if you design your own piece, which really, if you can carve a standing figure, you can design your own piece. There, there's the, the difference between carving someone else's figure and, and carving your own design. There's not a lot of difference. And after you uh, carve it, you're going to be able to claim it for yourself. And there's, it's, it's a lot more um, satisfying to do that. So that's what I'm going to help you do. Um, uh, you'll have learned a lot from my many mistakes over the years trying to design this armature. I've got one that's super easy to put together and super functional. So um, welcome. I'm going I'm to take you to the studio. Uh, this is where I carve. Um, I My studio was built uh, about 20 years ago, 2003. So right now I'm in, I'm in the kitchen and and we're gonna go out to the studio, okay? Yeah, I used to carve in the garage and one day I realized, uh, hey, I can build something. So this is, this is my studio here. 
Um, one of the things I, I always love is Carmel, California, and they, they have all these little uh, cottages. So I, I kind of found a design that I liked and we did this. So this is a bear that I did not carve. A good friend of mine who's a chainsaw carver carved that. And uh, this is my studio sign. When I first started in carving, I loved carving signs. And uh, so I learned that if you, three coats of oil-based primer, two coats of leaded paint, and it'll last 20 years out in the weather. So this is my studio. When you walk in, um, you see just a, a wall of carvings. It's really a pretty small spot. Everything in real estate in California is small. On this side, I have uh, my, of course, my flat screen and I've been known to sleep in that thing. Um, there's a story behind everything in this studio. Um, this is the main room. Here's some pictures of some CCA projects that we had. One was that street scene, one was the, uh, and I learned, I've learned a lot from Marv Kaiserstadt if you've ever been to this place. If there's wall space, unused wall space, you still have room to grow. So I've used a lot of wall space on here, kind of silly things. Um, these, are, these are mostly my carvings right here. And, and this is my collection of sea carvings, trade pieces. My pride and joy carving right here. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen that in a magazine or anything. That's the, the, the unpainted one is Marv Kaiser sat. Uh, the one um, next to him, the mermaid is uh, done by Harold Enlow. And there, there's a Chris Hammock one there and just, just everybody. Um, so here's, this is my wall of faces. Um, after I was a CCA member for a number of years, I realized that I'm, I'm not a good face carver. So for years, I just car started carving face after face after face. And when you do that, you become a much better face carver. Uh, there's only one way to get better and it's by, by doing it. Um, I, I went through a, a small stage where I love to do little little people and I got into these little tiny Santas. Um, I did this and here's some of these. I don't know if you guys have heard of these things called, I call them split personalities. Uh, they're kind of fun. You carve four, uh, four faces and a block of wood. They're segmented and you can spin them to make uh, different combinations like, like this lady who has a beard and a hat. And so it, it's just kind of different. Um, some, some, this is one of my larger pieces called Ace of Cakes. You guys remember that television show on, on uh, the Food Network. One day I decided I'm gonna carve an Ace of Cakes carving. So it, it became, became that. Um, here's where I car, uh, here's, here's some other carvings I've done. Um, I don't know, maybe you've seen some of them. Th this was in a book, one of our CCA books. Um, so I don't wanna spend too much time on any one. This is where I carve in here. Uh, it's just a small spot. I sit in this little chair and uh, I paint on this side when there's, well, not a lot of room for painting. Um, I carve here. I have a little, um, what do you call that? A thing you, that just spins because I carve from clay models a lot. I like to spin it to see. Um, what every side looks like. Here's, here's, you know, we all have these pieces that we want to start and we've never carved. This is, this is my next large carving. You can see there's a two guys on their knee, hands and knees, a guy on him, a guy on him, and a, the, the top guy is reaching over to screw in a light bulb. This is my, this is my bandsaw rough out for it. And I haven't gotten to it yet. I'm just feeling really lazy on, to start that one. Uh, one of my other hobbies I've had over the years is doing a hot glass um, in a torch called lamp working. 
I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that. Here's a torch right here. Um, and if you, it, it is fueled by propane and oxygen and the line goes up and around to that torch. And then I make beads. Here's some of the beads. And after you do a bead on the torch, you make it on a mandrel, just a little mandrel. These are mandrels. And then you stick it in an oven to cool down. And uh, there's, there's all my glass rods down there. So I don't do that nearly as much as my wife would like me to do because uh, she likes to wear the jewelry after I make it. And it's hard to wear wood carvings around your neck, but you can. Um, so without getting into too many particular details, that's, that's, that's my shop. But like I said, if you're ever in Sacramento, oh, you're welcome to come by. I'd love, love to show a little bit more of it. Here's one of my favorite carvings. It's called uh, How Many Men? Uh, three guys are screwing a light bulb, holding a guy's ladder, and kind of a fun thing. And that's about it. Okay, so let's go back into... Hey, Joe, while you're trailing back to the house, I'll tell them a little bit about the workshops that's coming up. Okay, great. Um, keep in mind, uh, Dave Stetson's getting ready to start a workshop. We're not getting ready to start, but he has one scheduled for May the 7th. Uh, it's on carving Uncle Sam. I saw on uh, Facebook, I believe it was this morning, that Dwayne Gosnell has the rough outs available for that class. So if you're interested, uh, reach out to Dwayne and get the rough out and uh, contact Dave and get signed up. Uh, another workshop is Janet Cordell. Uh, she's going to be starting one on May the 9th, all carving a uh, bighorn yes. sheet. So if you're interested in that, contact uh, Janet Cordell and she'll get you signed up. I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Jim. All right, guys. Hey, please, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. That way I know there's somebody out there I'm talking to. So um, I, I hope this will be really beneficial for you guys. Um, if you've been carving for, for a while, I mean, for a few years, uh, you can do this. And I hope the, the time that we spend today will help inspire you to, to uh, design your own carving. And what I mean by design your own carving is I'm talking usually about like a standing figure doing something. Okay, so um, if, if you can, if you've ever felt like, oh, I'd like to design my own carving, but I don't know how to start, Th this will at least give you some ideas, okay? Because once you design your own carving and you feel like, man, this, is, this has my, my fingerprints all over it, you, you're gonna really enjoy it. So today is not so much about me showing you how to carve a nose or an eye or a mouth. It's, it's more about how to think uh, creativity, creatively so that you can, um, call it a carving your own. Okay. All right. So. I, I don't know if, uh, if I, if, if anybody has any questions right now, but you know, you can always, uh, show, you know, call in or, and, and Blake or anybody feel free to interrupt me if you're, uh, if you've got a, a question about anything that, that comes in. Oh, I know there's some net questions about this knife. I know that this is, I'm gonna give you a little background about this knife. Um, really, I give Marv Kaisersat all the uh, credit for this. Uh, you know, when, when I was a, started out as a carver, um, I, Marv befriended me and I really loved how his carvings worked and I talked to him a lot and one day he sent, he made, you know, Marv, he makes everything himself. He made me two knives and they were, they were stubby handles and I thought, man, you know, typically the knives are longer and I, I would use it and I go, I love this knife, I, but I couldn't figure out why I loved it and, 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 and the reason why I loved it was um, is because it is short, you can 
you can put it in the palm of your hand. By the way, it's the same length from the end to the tip as a, as a palm tool. Okay, and we're used to using palm tools. And what you can do with this knife is you can stick it in your palm and carve this way. See, see how this thing is in my hand right now? I, I, can't, I couldn't get a regular knife in that position in my hand. So when I was carving a little more like fine things, I, I could get this knife in an angle that I couldn't do with a long handled knife. So it was a real advantage to me. So um, I asked Marv one day um, after Rich Smithson says, hey, you want me to uh, make a knife for you? I said, man, the only knife I really love that much is, is Marv's. And so I, I asked him if it was okay. He said, oh, he didn't care. So, um, so that's how this little stubby thing came about, okay? Because most people think, man, that's such a wimpy looking knife, but functionally it, it's pretty cool. So if you've never used a stubby knife, uh, that's the advantage of it. Okay, so um, here's what I'd like to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about four different carvings of mine that, that are, are original and some ideas about maybe how you could also um, come up with a carving uh, yourself. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how to make an armature. And the reason I'm spending so much time on these other carvings is because it takes about three minutes to make an armature. It is that quick. So um, let me just grab the first one. Um, there's, there's four carvings I wanna introduce and there's four reasons why these carvings came about. And when you come up with an original carving, you have to have a reason why, right? So I have four reasons why I came up with these four particular carvings. One was through a cartoon. Have you ever looked at a cartoon and said, oh man, I love that idea. I just, I'm, I wanna carve it, but you didn't know how to go about it. Well, let me grab that first one. Uh, we'll start with a cartoon. Another one is I remember I went, uh, my wife and I were on a vacation and we had actually gone to Europe. But on, on that vacation, I told myself somewhere along this vacation, I'm going to find a, 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 a subject to carve. Somewhere along this vacation somewhere, I'm going to find a carving subject. So that's, that's the second one. Another one, one day I said, I'm going to, I'm going to carve a tribute to wood carving. And then I had to come up with something that would have a tribute to wood carving. And then the fourth one was a very specific reason I had to do a wood carving. It was, a lot, it was basically a commission, but it was a, a reason for the commission. I'll go over that with you, okay? So I'm, I'm watching the clock. I don't, I don't wanna run over time. I wanna give myself plenty of time to talk about the armature. So I'm gonna run through these pretty quick. The first one is a cartoon. Uh, I came across this cartoon where a guy is holding a saw and he's, he's used the saw to adjust the legs of a chair. And of course he's cut down one leg uh, too much and he's had to cut down the other leg. And by the time he's finished, the chair is short and he's not feeling very good about it. So, so this, is, um, this is, I was trying to imagine what would the guy look like and, and from the cartoon, there's this guy looking bewildered holding a saw. Okay, so I came up, this is the clay model. This is the clay model I, I made. Um, so here's an old dude um, holding a saw and this, and this is all clay. This is all Sculpey clay, it's called. Sculpey clay is a copolymer clay. It's not like the kind of clay you pull out of the earth. It doesn't dry out if you leave it out and it never hardens until you bake it. So I like it. It, it costs a little bit more than earth and clay, but you, you know, you don't use a lot. Right, so I, I came up with a character that that was holding a saw, and and to make the saw, I didn't want to make the saw out of clay. I got lazy, so I just I just cut a, a scrap of wood, and you can see it from the side. That that's a pretty simple carving, right? I mean, if you've carved a regular uh, standing cowboy, the, the cowboy is probably harder than this thing. So and so, what I wanted to do is. 
I wanted them to look kind of bewildered. So when somebody looks bewildered, they have their, their head kind of cocks to the side, like, oh man, what did I do now? So this was the, the thing I, I modeled this carving out of. And so I had to do the, the, the chair and the pieces. And so I'm going to skip right to my finished carving. And this is, this is what it ended up looking like. Um, I'm a, I'm a, let's see. What? Go ahead and get it. There you go. Jeff. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, how's that? Uh oh. Oh, I should not have unmuted that. Okay, good. You're good to go, Joe. Okay. So you can see this. So here's a guy, he's saying, oops, he probably could have said something worse than oops. But um, so this is the guy. He's standing with the saw, with his head kind of cocked to the side with a bewildered look, the, this and, and the pieces of chair uh, leg. So that, that's an original carving. Uh, it's original, the idea is an original. There's nothing original actually. In, in art, there's nothing original. Everything is borrowed somehow. But if you get an idea through a cartoon and you carve it, it's yours, okay? So, um, a lot of times I'll look at this and I'll go, what do I really like about it? What don't I like about it? What I like about this is that I thought it was funny that the, the old dude had, has his waist way up high, like a, a, us old dudes wear pants sometimes. Um, I liked that um, his pants were kind of baggy. Um, I actually like the head on my, on my clay model better. I like the face. I like that he doesn't have a chin. Look at the profile of that chin. I like that a lot better than my finished carving. So, you know, th there's, there's always things to evaluate. So that, that's from a cartoon. That's a one great place where you can learn how to carve, okay? Um, another one was my vacation challenge. We went to Paris and, you know, I don't know, maybe some of you have gone to Paris. I was at the Eiffel Tower and everybody's looking up, you know, way up into the thing. So I, I said, okay, I'm gonna carve a tourist who's looking up at, at the top of the tower and he's gonna be holding a camera. So here's my clay piece for it. There's a, a tourist, he's bent way back, looking straight up, he's holding a camera and, and, and it's entitled I Eiffel. Now, if you can carve a, a cowboy standing there doing something and, and you were, and if you were looking at, if you were looking at this model and you had a, a bandsaw rough out of that, could you carve that? Yeah, you absolutely could, okay? So here's, here's the finished piece. I had it unpainted for many, many, for, for a while and just this last week I painted it because I think it's easier to see. So this, this is the piece, it's called Eiffel and this thing actually spins around. So, so this is, this is the, the piece. He's, he's the, holding his camera, looking straight up. It's actually a little too shiny for me, I'm hoping because it was just painted and all that stuff was put on there that the shine goes away. I don't think I want it that shiny, but, but that's what it is. What I like about this carving, um, I like that I gave it, even though he's standing still, there's motion in it. See his, see his uh, the tail of his coat is flying out like that. Uh, even even the, his vest flies out a little bit and he's bending way back. So even though he's, he's not, moving actively, there's a lot of motion in it. Okay, so if you can carve a cowboy, and if you're looking at, if you're looking at this, you can carve it, okay? So let's go on quickly. Um, my, a tribute to wood carving. Um, I wanted to carve a guy rocking in a chair, rocking in a rocking chair. And I wanted to entitle it Wood Carving Rocks. And so this is, this is the, the clay model. And sometimes it's easier for me to just 
carve out little pieces of wood like this, like the rocking chair, and then put the armature and the figure in it. Um, so that's, that was my model. This was a little bit tougher to carve than, than some of the other two. And I'll, I'll just show you the finished carving. So I, here it is. It's a, and it says wood carving rocks. Um, so when you do that, one thing I wanna to talk to you about design, when you're designing your own piece, it's important that, that whatever you design, it, you can see it all from the front. You notice how this, this, this foot sits lower than the, the foot behind it. Instead of making the two feet the same where, where the front foot would block out the vision of the second foot, I lowered this foot a little bit. I made, I made he's, he has his foot on a, on a stump and I made a little notch in the stump so he could put his foot into there. So, so from the front, it looks better. Same thing with this in my design. There's this guy, so what do you see? You see his head, you see the thing that he's carving and you see his knife. Nothing blocks anything out. It would have been really easy to stick the knife behind the head and not be able to see the knife. So those are just little things you think about when you're designing a piece, okay? It doesn't view well. And then another thing, because it's wood, this knife is pointing straight up, right? Um, a lot of times you wouldn't be pointing a straight knife, uh, a knife straight up, but you, you as wood carvers know why I pointed it straight up because I want the grain. If I had it straight forward, there's probably a good chance that, that the tip of that knife would break off. So those are little, little details of things that you design. And so the last thing I wanna talk about is um, I had a commission piece. I have a friend who's, a lot of you know, I'm a dentist, a retired dentist. I had a friend who was the outgoing president of the Sacramento District Dental Society. And um, they, they came up to me and, went and said, hey, he's the outgoing president. He talks about your wood carving. Could, would you carve him? a wood carving for him as, as a present from our society. So normally I don't take commissions like that, but he was, he's such a good friend. I said, okay. So I, I was trying to decide what would I carve another, I'm not gonna carve a dentist, okay? I, I don't wanna carve a guy in a guy's mouth. So, um, so I, I wanted to hold, have a guy holding a ribbon that said number one president. And so I wanted to say, okay, is he just gonna hold it just like he's holding it? Or do I wanna have him in some sort of motion? So this is what I came up with. I came up with a guy, this is my, this is my clay model. I came up with a guy like this, who's, he's holding, he would be holding the ribbon right here and, and he'll be pointing up at the ribbon. But look at, look at the position of this guy. He's not standing straight up and down. He's not static. His spine is turned to one way. His hips, are, his hips are turned. His shoulder is turned. And with the armature, you can do that really easy. Okay? So um, this is, so actually my friend has it. He owns it. This is another piece I carved. Um, it's not painted, but I have, instead of a ribbon, He's holding a bead that I made, and I just I just entitled it "Look," because the guy is trying to get the attention to whatever he's pointing at. So actually, it's a it's a pretty good idea to to um, bring attention to whatever somebody is looking at, and you could adapt this to your your own carving. And I have a really I have a, a picture. This is this is my friend. And he, this, is, this is him holding it. Um, this is what the carving looked like. Uh, and it, it took me a while to get it to look like him, kind of. And uh, he loved it. So, but, but if you can pull that off, it, it, it just makes everything so much sat more satisfying. Okay, so hey, let's talk about arm. Oh, yeah. Quick question in the chat. They're wanting to know how you transfer the clay pattern over to the wood so that you can actually do your cutout. Great, okay, so the way I do that is if, if, I'm, if I come up with this piece, 
I know where the front is. I know where the side is. It is very unscientific. It's, I just, I just put it up, up against like a book or something. And I just sit there with a pencil or a pen and I just go like this from the straight forward. You know, I outline it from the front view and then I outline it from the side view. I outline from the side view and now I have my two front and side views, put it up against my wood and, and that's it. I don't get too close to it, but I don't wanna give myself too much wood to remove either. Okay. Um, so here, that was a great question, thank you. So here's how I make an armature. Here's, here's an armature. And, and I'm gonna make one of these really quick. And you notice the way the armature is set into the, the, the base is just, just in holes. And this is what that looks like. You're probably wondering why, why are there so many holes? It's because I would, I would say, okay, I have this idea of this guy and I don't, I don't ever like the shoes straight forward and the legs straight forward. I want the shoes to go one way or the other. I want everything different because people don't um, stand around like toy soldiers. That's not a, that's not a normal natural pose. And so uh, when I would do this, I would always want to change the position of the foot or the legs. And I thought I, I would just give myself so many choices. I can move it as, as I'm setting it up, but let me make an armature first. Okay. So this is an armature and you can see how easy it is to, to move around. Like if you have an armature like this and I, if I, let's say I wanted the guy to reach up to pick a, an apple off a tree. I would just bend up his arm, go like this and say, maybe tip his head back a little bit so he could, he could look where he's picking. And I'd say, hey, that, that is a guy picking an apple out of a tree. Okay, so anyway, let's make the armature. How big of an armature to make? I'm just gonna make a, a standard medium armature need two pieces of 12 gauge copper wire. Okay, this one is 16 inches. 16 inches. And there's one 10 inches. Okay. You need two pieces of wire. And you electricians in here might understand appreciate this. I want, I have the, a crimp sleeve that um, I bought from Home Depot. Comes in a pack of 50 of them. This one is a 14-8. It's a little bit bigger than the smaller one that I have. The smaller one, crimp sleeve, comes in a pack of 100. This is a 18-10. Okay, so I have two crimp sleeves. Okay, that's all I need for armature. That and a base, okay? And some play, which I'll show you. Take the 16 inch wire, bend it in half, okay? Straight in half. You can crimp it for all you really strong guys, you could probably do it with your hands. So just fold it in half, right? 16 inch. Take the 10 inch one, do the same thing. Bend it in half. Okay. Take, take the large crimp sleeve and feed it. Like that. Take the smaller wire that that was fed through the with the long wire. Take the the shorter wire and put it right right there like that. Leave about an inch. Leave about an inch. and everything's approximate, right? Everything 
Okay, leave about an inch and crimp it. Take that and crimp it. You can crimp it for years. I crimped it with a regular pair of pliers like this and, and it works. But one day Jim Heiser comes up to me and says, hey, I have an extra pair of crimping pliers. Would you like it? Jim is now my best friend. Okay, so, so see what I did? Can you see that this little protrusion here is gonna be the head? And can you see that these are gonna be the arms? Okay, now we need, we need the feet. So we're gonna slip the smaller crimp sleeve again through the bottom. And this is gonna be where the legs split off. I'm gonna leave about another inch. Okay, I'm gonna leave about another inch and I'm gonna crimp this. Okay. Now, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna make the legs. See the legs? And I, now I'm gonna bend it because one thing I love to in my design to pay attention to are the hips. Okay, because the hips create a lot of action. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fold it so there's some hips there there, and the shoulders also. The shoulders create a lot of action. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bend this so that there's a little room for shoulders here. That's your armature. I, I used to solder these together. It took so long. But now, the, the, how long did that take? A couple of minutes maybe? And then now, you know, Let's let's get. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, an action or activity. Let's let's have a guy. Um, uh, feeding himself, eating him. You know, eating. Okay. So let let's let's put. Let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick this into one of the holes. like this. And you're probably wondering, well, where are the feet, right? Where are the feet? I used to, oh, this is another thing I did. I used to, I used to fold the end like this and then tack, tack it down with nails and bend it over. What a pain. This is so much easier. Just do this. And if you really like it, you can stick a little wood glue in there or hold it. And then, and then you're going, well, where are the feet? We're going to put those in when we put the clay. We'll just stick the feet in whatever direction it is. So it's so fast. Okay, so, so right now, this is a pretty static figure. There's no elbows or there's no knees, right? So let, let's, let's put an elbow and a knee in here. So I'll take... Knees only bend one way, right? So let me get a light on, I'm sorry. Let's see if this is a little better. So I'm gonna go ahead and look look at this, look at this this guy's spinal cord now. He's like tipped way back, right? Like this, you know, that's a very unnatural position. So what do you do? You think about what is a natural position for a body. A spine goes straight up. So here's what you do. How much better does that look now, right? And then what about his, his elbow? You have no elbows right now, they're straight. Turn his elbows up. Turn this elbow up. Now he's got arms. Now you, okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, 
his lower arm is way too long, right? Well, I like to leave a little extra here. Um, just as I left an extra on this piece, I knew he was gonna be holding a knife. And a lot of times your, your clay pieces that you design will be holding something. So sometimes if you leave an extra amount here, you can use that to put your clay piece or at least to remind you that there is something here. So what did we say? He's eating. Okay, so if he's eating, maybe he's holding something with this, this arm. And maybe he's, he's going to shovel with this hand. And it depends on what he's eating, but you can kind of see how, how you can see um, this, is a, this is a pretty active person. Here's another thing I like to do. I like to turn their spinal cords one way or another. Right now, his hips and his shoulders and his spine are all lined up, right? Look what happens if I, if I go like this. Look how much more better motion there is when, when all of a sudden you turn this. It, it's just as easy to carve a hip that's turned as it is a hip that's straight. It's just as easy to carve a spine that's turned that, than a spine that's straight if you have a go-by, right? Isn't that the key for all of us as we carve? that we need go-bys. All the classes we ever take, there's a go-by. Well, once you finish this piece and you put clay on him, he's gonna be your go-by. Th this was my go-by for my finished carving. So, so, that's, so now how do we, um, how do I put, how do I put clay on him? Okay, that's, that's okay. So, I'm not going to I'm not going to spend the time to put clay all over this guy but I do have a couple of pieces of clay that I did have. This is this is the Sculpey clay that I use. You can get this at Hobby Lobby, any any craft store. Okay, and there's there's three, well there's several different kinds of Sculpey. There's this is regular Sculpey. There's super sculpy, which is flesh colored. And that's what I used for this guy. It's what's the difference? This is a little stiffer and it's a little bit more expensive. So I kind of prefer the this regular sculpy, and it's not because it's it's cheaper. Well, that might be a reason too, um, because it's cheaper, but um if you if I let this thing sit for a year or a year and a half, which is easy for me to do, and I take it out of the box, it, it's pretty stiff. So this morning I had to take this out and just kind of work it a little bit in my hand just to get it soft again. If you do that with the super sculpey and let, let it sit for a, a year or, or two, it is so stiff. It is a pain. To soften up, so so I just decided I'd do this. Um, it for me, it's a little bit easier to mold something like this because it's a little stiffer. Um, but like on these, look, I for me, this is a pretty detailed clay model. Okay, for me, um, for me, this is a very detailed clay model. I I think I was just feeling in a mood that day, and I just hey, got whoa. a lot of detail. Okay, well, hey, look Joel. at this one. This is really, this is really undetailed. This guy is, I mean, you could barely tell that's a face. You know, there's a nose there, but you know that, but for me, what was important was to get his hand position and his hips and his shoulder turn. And just so that from the front side, it looked like he was in a pretty good position. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I was, just, I was just wondering what do you use tools of any kind? You know, there are all kinds of clay tools out there, but I just I use anything, uh, a pencil, you can use a tip of a screwdriver, 
anything just to shape it, it there there's nothing special with tools i mean okay. i have tools and i i barely use them okay um, great you Thanks. Some, sometimes i'm taking a popsicle stick and shape really quick a special tool that i need just to to get a, a certain uh indentation but for this you'll I'll, i need a little bit more tool work in there but but not a lot yeah yeah, thanks. Hey, Joe, is it, um, is it difficult to keep proportions in check when you're working with armatures? It, it, you do it by trial and error. So like a lot of times I started to do this and if this thing is an inch higher, that's a big difference. That, that makes a big difference. So you have to kind of, for me, this is, this was the, the 16 inch and 10 inch pieces of copper that's a pretty good standard size if you just go you know go a little bit bigger or go a little bit smaller just depending on what you want um you know what's really tough sometimes is the head proportion and so here's what i've decided i, I wanted to show you this so let i just kind of really made a quick head earlier so how do you do a head you know do it do you stick a ball on here like this and then and then mold mold the head let me let me show you you could you could just stick a, a ball on here and start molding a head that way or um what i've done and i don't know if there's the a right way or wrong way is because a head is important right a head and the face i've i've made the head like this and i've actually I've just split it in half with a knife real quick. And I've stuck it right on here. And that way I, I routine a little bit, I can get a little bit more detail. And one thing I do like to do in my carvings is I like to, I like to keep a neck in there. And I think that's a really important aspect of doing a wood carving because the neck shows a lot of movement. If your head is turned to one side and your neck follows it, it to me, it just looks really cool. Um, I, when I first started carving, I, I kind of got used to not carving a neck. And did it, does anybody notice? No, nobody knows. But if you do have a neck, it just, to me, looks so much better, especially if the neck is turned or not straight up and down. Okay. Um, I told you about, about a foot. So if you wanted to, but put a shoe on here. It's as simple as, you know, going this way. And going this way. So you don't really need any, any wire for where the foot is and you can chip up the foot a little bit. And that's another thing is um, when you're doing this, you know, really the, the front of the, the shoe kind of goes up a little bit like that. I think I, I do like realism. Um, I know we're caricature carvers, but caricature follows realism. So if you know what the, the, the thing looks realistically and you kind of follow that to me, it, it looks, a little less cartoonish but but on the other hand if you like the cartoon look that's fine too i'm not going to knock that so um so that so when i'm when i'm doing a, a piece like this very often i like to carve the base along with the figure Okay, so if I'm doing that, it's, it's pretty simple to know what size block of wood I'm gonna use because I try to match 
this, this block of wood and keep the figure within it, right? Keep the figure within it. And so what size wood do I grab? I grab a, a, a block of wood this size, you know, and then I, and I trace out the pattern from the front and I trace out the pattern from the side, stick it onto the wood, band saw it out and start carving. Um, I, I like, there's advantages to me to have, have the base the same as the, the figure. Um, in, in some ways it's harder to get between the legs and all this stuff, but I like to just stick it in a vise and, and take full size tools and kind of get started with that. Cause I don't have really strong hand strength. And, and if I can get full size tools on it with this thing locked into a, into a vise, man, it, it really helped me. Um, sometimes I've, I've, I've gotten too crazy with it. I've got full size tools and I'm banging away. I've, I've knocked on it. I've knocked these things right in half, which doesn't make me very happy when that happens. But um, are there, do you guys have any questions? Joe, another question. Um, somebody was wanting to know if you could go back over the materials that you use so the uh, gauge of wire and the size. Sure. Of the yeah, I, I know. I, I, you know, I do have a little time so I can slow down now. I didn't want to run out of time. So, let me kind of back up. So this is a, this is 12 gauge bare copper wire. You, I buy it from Home Depot. I know you guys have them out there and I just buy a length of it. It's sold by the foot. I think it's 40 cents a foot. 50, you know, by now it's probably a dollar, but no, I don't know what it is. It, everything's going up so quick, but for the amount you use, it's not, it's not a lot. And so I know somebody's gonna say, can I use wire with, with a plastic, with a sheathing on it? You could, um, I don't know if it'll fit, if you'll have plenty of room to get through these crimp sleeves or not. And I don't know if the crimp sleeve will bite into wire with the, with the plastic sheet. It, it probably work. It would probably work. So really there's no, there's no rocket science to this. It's just this, I'm just sharing you um, the way it works for me. Um, before I found, uh, did I tell you I used to use these? Um, so I used to just cut these off. I think I told, I can't even remember if I told you that. I, I would cut these off and then somebody told me about the, the crimp dresses. I think I went through that again. Um, so here, let me show you a picture of the crimp sleeves again. I buy these at Home Depot also. also. One is a little larger for the, for the legs. The larger, the smaller one, I'm sorry. The smaller one is for the legs. The larger one is for the shoulders and the spine. So, so two sizes is really handy. It takes you about three minutes to make. Use a perforated, um, and and the size of the uh, the size of the holes. Actually, I don't know if I wrote it down. Yeah, I, I use a seven sixty fourth inch drill to drill the hole. Nor I didn't even know that. And I just kind of look at it, trying to figure out what, what'll work. And, and that's, so when you're designing these pieces, pay attention to the shoulders, pay attention to the, to the hips and the spine. And, and I would challenge you when you're designing these things to purposely not make them straight, you know, to, to purposely tip tip it just a little bit, one way or the other. Purposely tip your spine, just a hair. It doesn't have to be a lot. You're gonna really love that carving much, much more. It's gonna be a lot more interesting. Um, don't necessarily have your head straight up and down, tip it. And if, you know, after a while, that, that is a little bit of a challenge to tip it um, and, and even turn it. 
So that, that's, a, that's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, here's a, a piece that's semi-finished. This is how I, I'll block it out. I didn't do the face because I thought, well, what if I want to do a face of somebody I know? So I never, so I kind of roughed it out. But this is what my rough out will look like. You know, um, if I'm going to tip this, which is it, 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 it's tipped. I draw a center line on my face. And, and I'm, I want to make everything symmetrical. Look at it from the top. I turn this into a corner. This is a 90 degree corner. And I, I get no detail, right, you guys, when you're carving. Don't do any detail until you get your form, until you get your head in the right position. Um, same thing with anything in carving, your hands. I didn't talk about hands. Um, so with the hands, a lot of times uh, with this, with this I'll, I'll make the hands separately. Sometimes I'll just make the hands as, as simple as like this. And if he's holding something, I'll, I'll just, if he's holding a stick or something, if he's holding a pen, I just get a little stick and turn it around here like, to make it look like he's holding that. And that gives me a really good idea of how I'm, I want to carve the hands. If, if you can see it, you can carve it, right? Um, so here, here's what I would suggest that you start out with. I, I suggest you would start out with a kind of a simple piece, nothing really too, too fancy. Um, I would suggest that, that you not make it a huge block of wood, nothing, nothing bigger than this, which is about, this thing's gonna be about eight inches tall, actually seven and a half inches tall, but nothing larger than that for sure. And, and maybe even six would be fine. And um, <clears throat> let's see, any, any other questions? Hey Joe, yeah. you and I talked um, before, um, before the meeting a few days ago about building out armatures uh, you don't use any clay or, or any uh, aluminum foil or anything like that to build it out to make it bigger. You just use all clay. Yeah, if I were doing a huge piece and I didn't want to use all that clay, then then you can, you know, what guys do when they're doing like huge pieces of sculpture, they use something to fill it in. So you don't have to use the clay. But, you know, how like this, how much, how much, there's not enough room really to put aluminum foil underneath it. it it's, there's not that much clay in here. You'd be surprised. Um, if I were working on a piece that was maybe uh, 15 inches tall, then I might wrap the armature. I might wrap this armature with tin foil or something so I don't have to use so much clay. But, but for this size, I usually don't. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do we have any other questions for Joe today? One, I know, uh, I don't know if any of you guys remember Dave Dunham. He's a, he's a, he was a carver in uh, Texas, one of the great caricature carvers ever. And um, he used to use pipe cleaners. He would just get pipe cleaners similar to this and kind of shape them to, to, to get positions. And if you're really good, you can do that. But I, I need more of a, of a go by uh, because I need to know 
how far back from the front of the wood like this hand would be. Look at the depth of this from, from where the tip of his foot is to the back of his hat. That, that's a big distance. And, and you, would, you would figure that out when you had your, your, uh, your patterns. <clears throat> but, but still, after, as you guys know, after you do the transfer your patterns, front and side, band sawed out, you're still looking at a lot of wood. So you, you have to be patient. Um, don't carve detail until you have the form. Don't even think of that. And that's that's about it. So, Joe, yeah. Joe, just curious, do you leave it in the soft stage when you're done or do you, do you go ahead and put it in the oven and harden it? Yeah, here, here that's a good question. Um, if I like it, I'll bake it. And baking it, it's like 200 and there, it's on the box, 230 degrees for about 20 minutes. Um, I bake it in our regular oven. Sometimes my wife is going, why is there wood and clay in my oven? <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, here's another suggestion that I would make for you, is after you design your clay model, on the same day, and, and after you, you know, after you've done the armature, after you've done the clay and you look at it and you go, I think I like it, don't bake it the first day. Sit on it. You know, I mean, not, not literally sit on it, but wait on it, okay? Um, because you're going to come back uh, maybe another day and you're going to go, you know what? I would rather see this guy's elbow out. Instead of straight down, I think I, I like his elbow out. Or, you know what, I think I like his hand a little farther away from his body. And as you know, once you start wood carving, you can't move those positions much. And so, <clears throat> I, you know, one of, my, one of my favorite stories is what I was trying, those three guys screwing in the light bulb. Okay, I had just the wires on, the, on a ladder. I had made a wooden ladder little wooden ladder and I had these three guys in position and I didn't like it I just did not like it the top guy screwing in the light bulb he was just reaching straight up and then one day um, the wire falls down it falls off to the side of the ladder and all of a sudden it looks like the guy is reaching way back to screw in the light bulb I said that's it that's it and that made to me, that made the whole difference in that carving was that position. So don't rush to go from your design state into baking it and in the carving state. Because the way I always looked at it was that it's really fun to design these things. Don't feel like because you're not carving, you're not having fun. You, in, in fact, in a lot of ways, it's more fun to design this thing than it is to carve it. Uh, sometimes I like my sometimes I like my clay models better than my carvings because there, there's there's a look of clay that 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 has a softness to it that's really hard sometimes to reproduce. So sometimes you can. So so don't be in that that hurry to go from your your clay model to to outlining the front and the back. In fact, you know, spend your time even before you put on the clay, make sure your wire position is, is how you like it, okay? Look, look how much time you're gonna spend carving this thing. You know, can't you spend an extra few minutes designing it? You, you'll be so glad you did. And once, once you have any design that you've done yourself and you call it your own uh you're gonna you're gonna love it um yeah so everybody i've ever taught who's designed their own piece has really um been been satisfied with what they what they do and and the finished piece doesn't have to be well whoever has a perfect finished piece right it's just, we're all learning. We're all learning to be better and we're all learning to design better and just do fun things. It's just all fun. Hey, Joe. Yeah. 
Um, my battery died there for a second. I'm sorry. Can you go sure. over the uh, size of the crimps? I missed that. Oh, okay, sure. There's two sizes. One, the the upper one that crimps crimps the the spine to the arms. That's a larger one. It's it's a copper. It's 14-8. That's the larger size. And there's 50 in a pack, and I don't think they're that much. Um, you can split it with somebody really easy because you you know you never get through that many. And then the, the smaller one is a 18 10, and there's a hundred in there. Great, thank you. Um, hey Joe. Yes. Um, is there any any problem with um, very fine? Um, um, clay around the wire when you're baking it in comparison to the rest of the body? Uh, not really. Look, look at how, look how thin the, this guy's thighs are. Hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like, like, well, like, like when you get down to the hands or the, or the, or the wrist. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so I, the, my wire ends right about where the, my wire, if this were his hand, my wire would end right about here. Oh, okay. It doesn't go into the, the fingers. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, here's another thing is I, there's different kinds of clay to use. I used to use um, a lot of sculptors who do bronze. They use plastilina clay. Hmm. It's a, it's an oil based clay. And I used to use that because it's uh it is still a little bit cheaper. You can buy blocks of it in five pounds. Mm -hmm. You can use that, but don't use the plastilina that has um, uh, sulfur in it. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, the, the sulfur reacts with the copper. And after about, oh, maybe a year, because sometimes I'll say, my, it just it gets all cruddy. So you, when you read it, just say it doesn't have any sulfur. And mm -hmm. I don't know if most of them have sulfur or not anymore, but that, that's the only drawback with that. And I've never used earthen clay with this. Um, I guess you could, but I, I, don't, I don't like the idea because it, it'll fall apart easier. Um, mm -hmm. Because when, once you bake this thing, it's pretty stiff. It, it's pretty hard. You could... This is Sculpey. <clears throat> this is Sculpey 2. <laughs> and Sculpey 3, which we would not use, uh, jewelry makers will make it because it comes in tons of different colors and you can manipulate small bits of it. And I've seen people make earrings and things like that as Sculpey 3. <laughs> so <clears throat> Sculpey or Super Sculpey is, is the way you want to go with that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, Joe, you invited everybody to Sacramento. Um, yeah. You still got that massage chair? I, who's this? You got that massage chair? I, st I do have that massage chair. Okay, I'll be over. <laughs> who, who's, who is this? It's Dave. Stetson? Oh, Dave Stetson, Dave Stetson, when he sits in my massage chair, the look on his face is, is, is about R-rated. <laughs> yeah, Dave, the massage chair is waiting for you. And we have a guest room for you too. Hey Joe, one quick, uh, quick question. Somebody asked me to go through your paint process. Uh, can you talk yeah. a little bit about how you finish your carvings? Sure. Um, I, I don't think what I do is any different than most people. I just use watered down uh, acrylics. Uh, one of the things I like to do, um, if, I'm, if I'm painting a pair of pants or a shirt or something or a hat, I'll never just use one color. Um, I will always use two or three different colors because when you look at a if you look at, look, look at my sweatshirt, um, see how it's, it, it's gray, but there's so many different shades of gray in there. So in all the, in all the crevices, it's, it's dark gray, almost black. 
And so um, in the crevices, I'll put a different color and then, and so watered down acrylics, um, typically after the words, I, I like to put um, linseed oil. Oh no, well before that I put, I, I, I'm really a big fan of, uh, and dry brushing it with a little white, a very light shade of white. I feel like it pulls out the carving marks a lot, very subtly, but it pulls them out really well. Um, like this guy here, uh, you know, if you look really close, you can see where I've dry brushed his shirt. I, I kind of like that look in a carving process. Um, and, and really, if you've ever been a painter, or painted anything, uh, highlights. I mean, look at look at my face from from this side. See how the light makes my my cheek a lot lighter than than this side. So even if I think any of the uh, the highlights, if if I'm dry brushing and there's some highlight I like, kind of like to dry brush a little bit more where I think the light would would show up a little bit more. <clears throat> Joe, you? Yes. Uh, listen, you're, you're doing a great job as usual. I'll see you in Colorado. It's Bob Howard. Uh, Bob, I, I recognize your name, Bob. Good. Thank you for see, listening. Great job. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Um, I know there's probably more questions. I think we have a few more minutes, too. Yeah, we've got time, Joe. That's fine. Real quick, Joe, you said something about the, um, um, I guess when you're talking about the, how much Sculpey you're using. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing uh, fingers or something, is that going to chip off as easily or is that something that um, you try to keep thicker? How do you deal with that? If, if I have fingers that are kind of floating in air, I'll try to keep the fingers together in the Sculpey. Um, but you know, if I'm going to carve them separately, then then I'll just I'll, I'll know to carve them separately. If the fingers, like on this guy, his fingers are kind of wrapped around the the camera. Um, I didn't do you know. There's some detail on there. Uh, the fingers are all resting on the camera, so there's no there's no weak spots. So that's another thing you want to kind of design into your carving. Um, like like look at this guy. Um, he has his hand up and he's, those fingers are not the best supported. They're not supported at all, actually, but, but I did it so that the grain of the wood would pretty much go straight up and down. I don't want to do cross grain fingers. You know, they're going to break every time, but if you have a hand that goes up like that, um, and, and the same thing with with this, the, one of the reasons why I had the finger pointed straight, kind of straight up, is it's with grain. So when I'm doing the clay, um, when I'm designing it, I wanna pay attention to the grain of the wood. And, um, and so like even in this one, I, I did, you can see how I kind of, this is really for myself, right? This is for myself to remind me you got to carve fingers and the fingers have to be in that position. Um, it doesn't have to be that much detail. I could have put a flat piece of, of clay there just to remind myself I have a, you know, like a lot of guys, they, they carve fingers like this, right? I've seen they're, they're always together. If I can, I like to separate fingers. I think it, it looks more realistic if you, even if you had, like three fingers together and one finger hanging off and if it were supported or if it were with grain, it, it looks a little bit more interesting to me. Um, yeah, th this, is, this is one I had, one of those things in my shop. Um, I wanted to do a, a, a little girl, um, and she was just like going into the wind and the wind was blowing in her face and she could lean into the wind and you could kind of see how, how that would be. Um, but
but it's one of those things I never got to, and I know I don't know if I ever get to. But I got a lot of those unfinished things in my shop, or I had great ideas, but they never came to uh, fruition. All right, Joe. Well, it's um, it's about sixteen after um, four on Eastern Standard Time, so I'll go ahead and stop you at this point. Uh, I want to say thank you for coming on and uh, presenting for us. Uh, a lot of great information, a lot of things to think about as far as uh, design and movement and uh, creating armatures and using clay. Uh, so we appreciate you sharing all that with us. I uh, just want to remind everybody that Joe will be out in uh, Colorado Springs in September. Uh, he's teaching a class out there. So if you haven't signed up, make sure you sign up for that if there's spots available. I know they're filling up quick, so you may want to go out on the CCA website and check that out. Uh, and sign up for Joe's class if you get a chance. Again, I think he's going to be talking about armatures out there and doing uh, some more of uh, what he's talked about today. So make sure you check that out. Uh, want to remind you all that our videos are available out on YouTube for all the meetings we've had in the past. Again, next week we're coming up on the two-year anniversary of these meetings. So we started back uh, April 18th of 2020, and uh, we've done it a solid uh, two years minus a few weeks here and there. Uh, for summer and around Christmas and things like that. But uh, if there's any of the meetings that you've missed, make sure you go out and check that out. Uh, we have a newsletter also. So um, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, we put our link tree over in the chat. You can go out on the link tree and uh, click on that and sign up for the newsletter there. Uh, you can also buy us a coffee if you want to support us so that we can continue these meetings. Um, we'll say a few more minutes on the knife. Uh, place your bid in the chat if you're interested in that. Uh, we'll be closing that out in just a second. Again, next week, Chris Hammock's going to be coming on on April the 16th. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, sharpening video that he's created that we'll uh, show during the meeting. And he's going to talk a lot about the Carving the Rockies uh, show out there with the CCA and what all is going to be available for people if they come out to the show. So uh, make sure you join us next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I uh, don't see any other, um, any other bids in the chat, so we'll go ahead and close that now. Um, the winning bidder is uh, Joseph Yakowski. Uh, if you'll stay on the meeting here at the end, uh, we'll get your information. Again, I just want to thank you all for joining us. This is the International Association of Woodcarvers, uh, where woodcarvers are continuing to help woodcarvers. Uh, join us again next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Chris Hammock. And we appreciate you all joining us today and we'll see you all next Saturday. Thank you.